Again, my name is David Lair. I'll be your co-moderator. I do technical support primarily here at the SCC Elk Grove Village Training Center. But as stated over the past 15 years, I've visited many of you for training at your company, as well as many other locations. The LMV5 system shown here, primary features include a very configurable flame safeguard, a parallel positioning system for fuel and air ratio control, integrated valve proving, up to five actuators at once, internal PID controller, as well as optional O2 and trim and variable frequency drive. Our technical LMV5 instructions can be downloaded from the SEC website or ordered free of charge by contacting your sales rep or customer service. Some of you may have been mailed a copy for this webinar today. Section and page references in this presentation are referring to this document. One of the LMV5's greatest features is its programmability. Specific applications will dictate the wiring required for any specific site. Section two wiring should be worked along with section three parameters to determine the functions of many of the terminals. Larger white terminals on top of the LMV5 are high voltage, line voltage connections. These terminal designations have three parts, not unlike somebody's social security number. They designate the plug group, the plug number, and finally the pin. Smaller green terminals are placed along the sides of the LMV for low voltage connections. These terminal designations only have two parts, which would be their plug number and their pin. I'll go into more detail shortly. In keeping with the flow of information and the technical instructions, let's go to grounding. There are many quote unquote ground terminals on the LMV5 in three basic types. PE, protective earth, are heavy duty, that is, they have heavy duty traces on the circuit board inside the LMB5, and they're protected by a 6.3 amp fuse. Next, we have FE or functional earths for low voltage shields and references for signal inputs and outputs. The example I often use is, you wouldn't ground your ignition transformer to the steam sensor shield, even though the both are quote unquote grounds. Next, I'd like to mention the CAN bus and its shielding. It will be covered more in more detail in later slides. At this point though, I'd like to point out that the CAN bus connections at X50 and X51, these are the six position green connectors that connect the LMV5 to the AZL display and to the CAN bus actuators. I'm providing this show slide to show how the shield on the CAN bus cable is brought to pin one of these two pin connectors by a part number called AGG5.1110. This clip clamps onto the shield of the incoming cable and provides a wire for the pin one connection, as well as providing a strain relief. Next, I'll show you a chart to help you determine when you need two transformers. First, it must be said, far and away, most LMV5 installations only require a single transformer. However, with any combination of longer lengths of cable that are needed, up to 330 feet total, and or higher torque actuators are used, or simply more actuators, then a second transformer may be needed to provide full power to the system. Next, this is a bird's eye view of the top of an LMV5 where all of the line voltage connections are. Notice at the bottom right, there's a plug group that starts with the X3. Working left, you see X4 and X5 plugs. Continue down the left are X6 and X7, and finally across the top, X8, X9, and X10. For reference, there's a legend showing the pin numbers as provided, as well as some descriptions. Let's take a closer detail look at this. Starting with the X3 group, the technical instructions provide a tabled list of all the LMB5 terminals. And the information includes terminal number, an example is highlighted above, X3-02.1, specifically group X3, plug number 02, and finally pin number one. Next is the type. 
as this particular example is a programmable input that's followed by the function. In this case, it's a blower air pressure switch. And then it's followed by the parameter that controls the programming of this terminal. In this case, two terminals, two parameters affect this terminal. Air pressure test to act or deactivate this feature and fan run up time to program how much time is needed to make this input once the fan is started. And lastly, the rating of each terminal, in this case, 120 volts line voltage, 1.5 milliamp input. This design follows through on all of the LMV5 terminals. On the side of the LMV5 are the lower voltage green plugs with a legend pin showing the pin numbers and the functions. And again, in the technical instructions, a table of num terminal information. Throughout the instructions, the relationship is shown between terminal, function, and parameter. This is repeated in the manual's text, charts, wiring diagrams, parameter descriptions, and the troubleshooting section. Terminal, function, parameter. This is one final example of some terminal listings and illustrates the PLL module used for the O2 trim system. Next, we can look at some electrical ladder diagrams. This is a very common way to show wiring diagrams, starting with the line voltage inputs. Again, note the three items, terminal number, terminal function, and finally terminal parameter used to program the terminal. On the left, Notice the many line terminals shown here in brown are in fact all connected to each other. On the right, the specific inputs to the LMV5. In this slide, I also like to point out the safety loop shown above in red. It starts with X304.2 and finishes with X303.1. Items in this circuit are lockout, non recycled devices such as a high pressure, a low, low water and in the many cases of the European burners, a flange switch to prove that the burner is in fact engaged with the boiler. This is followed by all the line voltage outputs of the LMV5. Again, parameter, description, terminal. Notice to the right, shown in blue, all of the neutral terminals are connected to each other. The more discrete terminals you have for inputs and outputs, the more you can customize an LMB5s for a specific application, and the better the diagnostic capability. Shown above illustrates the many options we have for low voltage sensor connections and signals to the LMB5. X60 is used for temperature inputs from RTDs, resistance temperature devices. Nickel or platinum is used, 100 or 1000 ohm based ranges. An example would be a PT-1000, reads 1000 ohms, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and the ohms increase as the temperature goes up. X61 is used for steam pressure sensors or for temperature transmitters, 4 to 20 milliamp, 0 to 10 volt DC. X62 is for mode switching, external set point, or external firing rate. This illustrates the wiring used with a variable frequency drive, a VFD. The LMV5 utilizes the safest control method, what's known as a closed loop control. Three parts are shown. At the bottom, a dry 24 volt DC rated contact, X73.1.2, are used to start and stop the VFD. In the middle, X73.4 and 0.5, is the 4 to 20 output for the speed commanded to the VFD. And towards the top, X70.1, 0.2, is a speed sensor input feedback from the motor showing the RPM to close the loop, quote unquote. The speed wheel is a three fingered asymmetric disc for RPM and to check for the proper direction of the rotation of the motor. A VFD provides the safest operation by generating that the motor speed is proper throughout the entire firing range of the burner. The transfer on the LMV5 has a single line voltage input, shown here as PRI, the primary, 
Below that SEK2 are the two 12 volt AC secondaries that are in fact out of phase. So while the CAN bus only has 12 volts potential along its length, the actuators are supplied with 24 volts AC. The third is a final second secondary winding and it is 12 volt AC and it powers the LMV5 internal electronics. I'd like to show how the fusing is done on the LMV5 system. Starting at the top left in terminal X304.5, line voltage enters the LMV5 and it proceeds to fuse number one, which is a 6.3 amp slow blow fuse. It is five by 20 millimeters in size in a clip with a spare. From fuse one, it exits the LMV5 at X1001 and proceeds to the transformer primary. Voltage from the transformer, now 12 volts AC, returns back to the LMV5 at X52, a green four pin plug on the side of the LMV5. From X52, it travels to a pair of 4.0 amp fuses, fuses number two and three, also 525 by 20 millimeters in size, also with spares. Finally, the third secondary tap on the transformer returns to the LMV5, again at terminal X1001, to provide the LMV5 power unit. Physical locations of these fuses is shown. And finally, I'd like to point out a common wiring error from the transformer SEK2 to LMB5's X52. Note the crossover. Specifically, one goes to one, two goes to two, three goes to four, and four goes to three. If your installation requires two transformers, the first unit is wired just as on the previous slide. All LMB5 installs will have this. Shown above in blue, this will power the first set of actuators closest to the LMB5. A second transformer, when needed, can power the balance of the actuators, shown in red. Wiring basically starts from the end of the line and daisy chains inward. Take notice of the yellow highlighted section. Only three wires are run between these two devices, whereas all other connections, five wires are used. This also includes grounding. And then I should note that fusing for the second transformer must also be provided. Also detailed in technical instructions is the pinout of the pre-made AZL cable, part number AGG5. 0.635. This is to assist in troubleshooting. Note the AZL's three ports, a DB9 on the bottom of the AZL for CAN bus, also on the bottom an RJ45, RS232, Modbus RTU connection for the BMS. And thirdly, on the front of the AZL, behind a closed door, is a DB9 for connection to an optional PC for backup and restore. Second detail on this slide is for flame detection, which could be one of any of three devices, a simple flame rod or a UV self-check scanner or an infrared also self-check scanner. The scanner terminals have many options throughout the world and in CAN bus, I mean in Canada, US, Mexico, Central and South America, options are shown here. Note that the plug X10-02.2 pins start with pin number two instead of one. This is most widely used on the infrared and QRI scanner, which is shown. The following slide covers the O2 trim connections. When doing O2 trim, a PLL CAN bus module is required and obviously the oxygen sensor called the QGO. Not required, but usually supplied, are the ambient temperature sensor and the stack or exhaust flue gas temperature sensor. These two sensors allow the LMV5, along with O2 level reading,
to calculate and display burner efficiency. O2 trim is an investment, and the small adder for two RTDs is well worth the benefit of viewing the actual efficiency. I hope this has given you a better understanding and the confidence to wire and utilize the LMV5 to best fit your application. Join us again next time for part 103 next Tuesday, June 16th at 10 a.m. Uh, 10 a.m. Central Standard, where we'll talk about parameters and commissioning in greater detail. Thanks. <laughs>